So uh, we did we did a few things in these last couple of meetings. We were focused a lot on saving the data to the uh, database. The last thing we did on uh, Thursday before the uh, assessment was uh, deleting the data from the database to start over. So we have these operations um, that are common in every uh, every instance where we use databases. We have save data to the database, delete the data, retrieve the data, edit the data. So we're still with that. We're still setting ourselves up to fully interact with the data we've created. Let me just create an account here and log in so I have access to my to my uh, to my app. And I'm going to save a comic. So what we're going to do is continue to work with what we've got here. So. The, the table that we're creating here, let me just confirm on mine, the table that we're working with of comics is uh, still needs some work. Uh, Design-wise, We'll get to that. But when I'm saving something here, when I'm saving something here, and then I view it, oops, I made a little mistake, the Hulk. So if I had also saved the information of the publisher and all of that, well, where is it? So the point of this basic view of the table is I want to see the name of the comic, the number, and then, okay, if I choose to see more info, I will be able to click that icon, and it will show me also the publisher, the year, and notes, and all of that. Even better, it'll show me, it'll give me a way for us to fix our mistakes. I want to, I want to spell that properly, or I want to delete an individual entry. So that's what we're going to start looking at here, making this button work so that then I see the extra information per comic, and then also a way to delete individual comics or uh, edit individual comics. So to have something to work with here, I would create a couple of comics with all of these fields filled in so that we have these properties of these objects to work with, because the Hulk comic basically is one object, the Spider-Man comic here is one object, and there's the properties of the title, the year, uh, the number, the notes, everything. Those are properties of this object. So I want to be able to edit these individual objects or delete them from the database. So uh, I'm just going to fill in a couple more comics here to have something. something, a few comics in the database. Okay, so I want to be able to click on these, on these um, little icons to give us more information about the comic and then to be able to edit. And this is honestly um, a lot of setup to get that to work. But once we've got the setup working, the algorithm, it'll then be ap applied to all of them relatively easily. So it's the first setup that takes a moment. 
we need uh, to make these icons clickable. We then also need to create a screen that will display the rest of that information. So the clickable interactive stuff will, of course, be the JavaScript. And the visual stuff will be the jQuery mobile, the HTML portion. So we need to set up a screen that will display the rest of the information. Let's open up our index.html file. So in our index.html file, we need to add a new section, a new screen where we can see the rest of the comics info. So index.html, we'll go to the very end of the document. Let's see, I've got um, PG save comic. Then we've got the template. I'm going to borrow this template that's already there. I'm going to need to tweak it a little bit, but that has enough for us to start to work with. So I'll copy uh, PG template and paste it above itself. And then we'll change a few things. So I copied that. This is going to be start. View comics info. And we've got end view comics info. Basically, copy your whole template chunk, paste it above itself, new comment here, and then we will edit the items inside. Number one, we don't need a footer. This is going to be related to a simple pop-up instead of a full screen section. <coughs> this is just for aesthetics. So I don't want a footer in that new section. We need to very importantly change the ID, no longer ID template. We'll call this, as I said, it's related to a pop-up, so we'll call it pop view comics info. We could call it PG view comics info, sure. Again, these things don't matter. But if you name them sort of logically about what they are, or what they do, what they look like, that might help identify them when you're looking at your hundreds of lines of code. This one, uh, hmm. now this one's got a data theme of B. I think I should put that back to A, unless you know that you've got your, unless you know you've got B themes of design, or you can just remove that so it'll go back to the default of A. In our header, h1, we will say comic info. In this nav bar, we don't need. We don't need a complex navigational bar here. This is going to be a, a screen that pops up with a purpose to display the comics. It's going to be separate. It's going to pop up in a, in a pop-up screen sort of way, uh, slide into view or something. And it doesn't need a navigation because we can just simply close it. In the main article section, let's remove that H2. We'll create a new div here. ID div show comics info. Be careful here about plural or singular. I, I've seen people do this, and I do it too. You just have to be careful. Was it show comic info, or was it show comics info? Keep it consistent. What's that? Or view comic info. Or view comics info, yes. Uh, yeah, that might be a good idea. View comics info. 
Yeah. As long as we keep it consistent. Div view comics info. So plural, singular, your spelling, all of that. I see the opposite too. Developers go the opposite. I'm kind of being very verbose with the names of these things, and I see a lot of other developers that are the opposite, that are very, very, what's the opposite of verbose? Not verbose, sure. So, uh, so that's like naming things, you know, CP. Like, what does that mean? I don't know what they're trying to, what, what is that object, or what is that ID, or what is that? Sometimes people use very, very short names. Here I'm using very long names. It's longer, more to type. But if we've got this code completion IDE, it should type it for us, hopefully. So this div here is going to be uh, used uh, where we're, where we're going to view the comics, or it's going to show the rest of the information of the comics. There will be paragraphs where, again, the complete name of the comic will be visible. Another paragraph where the number a paragraph for the year and you know all of those fields that we created in our in our comic in the data that we're saving to the database all of those fields name number year publisher comment do we call it comment or note notes note or notes whatever we called it so those are the main fields that we created we haven't created this one just yet, but we'll get to it. We might as well add it here. Barcode. <coughs> Again, remember, we're going to scan the barcode of the, of the comic. And when we test this, uh, we will actually be able to scan the barcode. If you borrowed one of those uh, boxes of tablets, there's barcodes on the side. So as we test this, you'll be able to scan that uh, barcode on your, uh, on your box to see it in action. We have not created a field for that data in the database. That's OK. We can always add to it. And here I just need a placeholder for it. And we'll do this eventually also uh, an image. We're going to take a photo of the comic or anything we want. And we want that photo associated with, uh, with the comic that I took a photo of. So we might as well put our image placeholder here. Source set to nothing at the moment. a class here so I can control it via CSS later comic image another paragraph where then we'll have a couple of buttons now we're not dealing with a form so we can use a plain old button tag there's gonna be a button that we will call uh, delete so we press this button to delete this comic There'll also be another button right next to it to edit. So all of this, remember, the point of this is we're going to click that little speech bubble on the main view where the main table is at. I want to see more information about Hulk. So I press that little speech bubble. This screen will appear, and all of these fields will be filled in. All of these fields, which should be in the database when the comic got saved, will be populated here. This button, and both of those buttons need an ID so that I can make them work. BTN delete comic. And then ID. ETN edit comic prep prep so um, when we edit the comic we'll see why that makes sense in a little bit but it's going to be similar to when we wanted to display the the data that's already been saved we had to prep the data a little bit before actually displaying it it's very similar here well I want to edit what currently exists and for us, when we use someone else's Apple, it's so easy and obvious. I click the Edit button, and I click Edit, and I save, and it's done. But internally, a lot has to happen, checking if the data is valid, or if the data is in the right format, or if it makes sense, and whatever. So uh, this is going to be for us to prepare to edit the comic data. So 
So check your spelling on this stuff. This is a brand new screen where we're going to display the comic info. Everything that we've saved, we've been able to get by at this point just saving the required stuff, which was the name of the comic, the year of the comic, the number of the comic. For us to see everything, we should save a little more data, and all of that data will be displayed on screen. We'll go over to our JavaScript and then we'll set up a function um, that is going to get the ball rolling with this to view the comic. And then we'll set up an event handler to trigger that function after we've pressed one of those buttons. So I'm going to save the HTML. At the moment, there's no way to get to this screen. There's no button. There's no trigger or anything that will let us get to this screen to, to see this screen. But it's a plain old HTML screen. It's something we've done several times. So uh, back to the JavaScript, index.js. So we're already up at 400 lines of code on this. If you remove the uh, comments, we have a little bit less, but we've got lots of lines here. We still have more to go. But at about line 396 or so, after our function where we deleted the collection, uh, we're going to create a new one here. Function show, or fn show uh, comics info. Um, in my notes, I've got it show, but let's do view, and I hope I don't forget. But that's a good point. Yeah, sometimes working through it, you can have a little inconsistent, inconsistency like that that snowballs. But yeah, let's. It's a good point. Let's try to keep it consistent. And if we've got this autocomplete, it shouldn't be a big deal if it autocompletes it for us. So a function of you, comics info. Um, this is the end. View comics info. Now, we saw on the table, I've got three comics so far. I've got three icons, three little speech bubbles uh, on each of those rows, Hulk, Spider-Man, Superman. I want to click on a particular speech bubble and edit that particular comic. So this function here is going to trigger depending on which of those three comics I click on. Each one of those three comics is uh, related to a particular object of data in the database. So we're going to pass into the function an argument this comic. This, this is going to be dynamic. Depending on which of the rows I click, we mean this comic. The first one, the second one, the 20th one. So based on the particular comic we click, it's going to be an instance of this comic. This is going to change depending on which of the rows I click on. So basically, we can make a note. Depending on which row in the table, display the info for that comic.
because this will be a little complex, uh, it's a good idea to put in a console output here that simply notes that this function is running. Fn view comics info is running. Putting this, and I, if I see that output in my console, that should confirm to various degrees I'm on the right track. Because what we're going to need to do is pull the data out of the database, process it a little, display it on screen, and a lot could go wrong. As simple as, oh, I'm not, I'm not displaying the data that I thought. Whoops, I'm displaying the Superman comic, but I clicked on the Spider-Man comic. What's going on? So uh, having a little bit of console output like this helps us hopefully track down a bit where the errors are happening. And so how this will further work is, if you recall, we've got a table. If we back up just to show you here the table, we might not think in code, but remember, we've got here, we, we, we create a table, and then we create a row with headings, and then we loop over and over to create a new row. So the Hulk comic is first, and then Spider-Man, then Superman, alphabetically. So we've got a brand new row for each of the data between the sandwich, the top of the sandwich table, the bottom of the sandwich table. In between, we've got the fillings of the sandwich, each individual row. Well, here's how we're displaying the, uh, the title and the number of the comic. And then we've got the icon right there. That little icon was that uh, character entity that displays the, the icon. So each row has an icon and each row has a class. All of this time that we've been working, we've been dealing with IDs. An ID is a unique identifier attached to one thing in all of our 400 lines of code. One ID references one thing in our code. Conversely, a class can be used to reference many things at once. So we're going to create a way to click on any <coughs> instance of the speech bubble. At the moment, I've got three. Any instance of the speech bubble, but it's going to refer to a certain row, the Spider-Man row, or the Hulk row, or the Superman row. And the way that works is because we also built in here data-id. Spider-Man's row has an ID related to its underscore ID in the data. And Hulk's row has an ID with its own unique ID there, so that we know what data we're pulling from the database. So we need to create a way to be able to click on any one of these speech bubbles, but reference a certain row. And we have it set up in that way. We just need to create the event, the event handler, to run the function. Let's go down to. Let's go down to uh, where we've got our all of our event listeners here. So we've got uh, submit, couple submits, on clicks, on clicks, etc. We're going to create a new one down here. Event listener. To handle when a speech bubble is clicked in the table. So we've had these, uh, these, these objects, these jQuery-based objects that we created. And we use the method on, or the method submit, to eventually run a function. So we've got those classes representing those bubbles. We've got a function. So logically, OK, well, I want to reference those, those objects on click, do what it needs to do. But here's, here's the problem. All of these objects that we're referencing here exist in run, on runtime. These objects with these IDs 
exist at the moment that the project loads. The table doesn't quite work the same way. The table is dynamic. It's built dynamically and then eventually HTML is written so these objects don't quite exist at the same time that these other objects do. But what does exist at runtime is the whole um, div that encompasses them. Um, not, not there, but up over here. There's a different div that exists that encompasses them all. So we need to reference the, the div that does exist before we can reference the individual rows. So Hulk doesn't exist at, the, at runtime, and Spider-Man doesn't, and Superman and all of that, those don't exist at runtime. So we need to reference first the, the parent div that does. Let's back up to where we've got the, the list of all of our all of our divs, I mean all of our objects. Uh, let's see, back at the top. Let's see, where is that at? Okay, right here, so at about line 180 or so. Div show comics table. Well, actually, we've already got it set up good. Uh, okay, so this um, this is what I'm saying. The the div that displays the whole table. We've already got an object for it. Um, these classes that then get output don't aren't aren't created until we've actually started to save data to the table to the database these right here these classes don't exist yet until there's been data saved to the database so well we've got these uh, we'll, we'll back down here sorry we went up and down I just need to refresh my memory so yes um, should you change it to well, that's the thing there about view versus show. Uh, I'm going to leave it as is because I think there's ins there's references to it that had it as show comics elsewhere. So I think we should just leave it to be safe. But yes, uh, if we want it all completely consistent, we'd have to confirm uh, view versus show. Uh, yeah, I just meant the um, actual reference itself. Like equals dollar sign and then no, but that's different. That's something we made a different day. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. The one, um, this one that we just made right now, uh, we're not working with this one yet. Oh, View okay. comics info. We're dealing with the one uh, elsewhere over here where we display the whole table uh, somewhere else. So. Okay, so uh, we've got dollar l div show comics table dot on. That's uh, that's a reference to the div where we display all of the table of comics. Quotes, click, comma, function, view comics info. This looks like it would make sense, but in our case, it wouldn't, and I'll explain why. This syntax looks exactly the same as before. But this syntax was for, again, for something that existed. <coughs> At runtime, the HTML gets processed. It exists on screen. We can reference it via JavaScript. We have the special case of those speech bubbles that don't exist on runtime. So 
we're targeting the whole parent table. Right here, this is the parent table. And technically we're saying, anywhere that you click in the parent table, show me the comics. But that doesn't make sense. Clicking anywhere, how would that make sense to click on the particular comic, Spider-Man or whatever? Well, we have to do something a little different. We add also another argument here. The name of that class that of those of those uh, speech bubbles. So we're going to have another, another, another parameter here. Click the name of those speech bubbles and then the function that we're trying to run. So these speech bubbles are called btn show comics info. They are, they are classes. So what we're writing here is dot btn show comics info. So just for some notes here. If we had, you know, var thing equal dollar, oh, more technically there. that we've done that over and over and that should make sense that it is referencing an ID. Well, what's obvious? How is it obvious that I'm saying that it's an ID? Pound sign. So we've used the, the pound sign to reference something that had an ID. Or another thing. quotes dot HTML thing referencing many class is an ID can only be used for one object one element that's its purpose uh, you name something an ID and only one thing, only one button in our whole document is called delete database. One thing has an ID. But many objects, many elements can have the same class so that we can reference them or affect them all at once. So anything that has a class, we use the exact same syntax we've used before, but the big difference is that dot. And that big difference is a little difference, but it's a big difference, isn't it? Where we've used the pound sign before, now it's the dot. And that means one or many classes. In my case, I've got three comics saved. Three comics in that table. Three comics that have a row that has a cell with uh, BTN uh, show comics info class. So what we're saying here is, there is an object that is the parent table. When we click specifically on the speech bubble, basically, run the function, show me the comics info. So um, when we click on the object, on the element with class btn, show comics info in the object or the element uh, l div show comics table invoke the function function view comics info So it's like a level inside of a level. This is a child element of a parent element. A cell in a table is a child. You know, the parent is the table. And all the items inside the table, the rows and the columns and the cells, are children elements. Basically, I'm saying, let's click on a child element in this parent element to run that function, basically.
this is what then makes us able to click on those individual speech bubbles in short. Without this, it would be, yeah, click anywhere in the table, which won't work. We only want to be able to click on the particular speech bubbles of that particular row. So now this function, what we had right up here, function view comics this comic. Well, we need to pass in uh, a parameter. We need to pass in this comic, this row of comics. So this has to be refined a little bit more, too. We need to, similar to what we had up here with submit, we needed to pass in an event to function sign up to do prevent default. We're not going to do prevent default here, but we need to pass in the ob an object, particularly which comic, which row we clicked on. And each row is defined with data-id. So let's back up and say function. So here's an anonymous function where we're wrapping the curly braces around function view comics, which then gives us access to the par parentheses. Without this syntax, we, we can't use the parentheses to pass in uh, a parameter. Notice up on uh, function logout, we, we didn't need to pass in a parameter. We just call the function that way without parentheses. Function delete connection, we didn't need to pass in an object, no parentheses. We needed to pass in an object to function sign up and login. So notice the syntax. We had the anonymous function with what object are we talking about to then pass it in to then use it right here. So that has to do with which particular row? Spider-Man row, the Hulk row, whatever we've got. So we have dollar this. We have in a special object in JavaScript in many programming languages called this. And this relates to this. This relates to what did you click on? This is the thing I clicked on. This is the object I clicked on. I clicked on this particular object, so it's defined as this, meaning I can use it as a sort of a shorthand and see all of its properties and, and methods and so forth. So be careful here. Uh, it is double parentheses, because it's the dollar jQuery selector this, so it's like that, dollar symbol parentheses, this, and then closing parentheses of the function. OK, so this means uh, I clicked on a speech bubble. It's this speech bubble. It's the speech bubble of the Hulk. That's what that's trying to say. And um, I would be passing in that speech bubble, all of it as that object, all of what that speech bubble is. But I need to deal with that whole row, not just the speech bubble. So inside, uh, right after that, right after that closing parenthesis, but still inside of the parentheses, then we'll have dot parent method. All of this that I have highlighted here, <coughs> this is inside of the parentheses of function view comics. All of this convoluted, esoteric thing is saying uh, a reference to the whole row, in particular, which row did I click on? The Spider-Man row, the Hulk row, the Superman row, the Mighty Mouse row, whatever. So uh, based on the particular one that I clicked on, the particular bubble, it's parent. So that whole row, the TR. Semicolon there, uh, because that is a complete statement inside of that function. So 
my code is there. So it is really convoluted, yes. So let's write a note here. We're saying into function view comics info pass the parameter the parent, so table row. of the particular <coughs> of the particular uh, speech bubble we clicked on. Let's, we can write it over here also to to reiterate it. So this would have only been the speech bubble itself. So parent is the whole row. Everything in that table is a cell. Uh, everything's a cell. And it's a child of a row. The table is made out of rows. So we're saying parent. Basically capture that row that we clicked on, that speech bubble. So this is getting long in my view here. Uh, let me move it like this briefly. You don't have to do this. But if you, if you press Enter right there for two lines. Uh, so we've got the first uh, parameter, comma, second parameter, comma, third parameter. You don't have to do this, but I put it on the next row just so you can see it all on one line, because that is one long line, especially here where we have to do this pretty advanced trick to reference this particular row of this particular bubble we clicked on when we click on the speech bubble, which is a dynamic object that appears in this static object. So again, when, uh, when we use a, an app that we've downloaded off the App Store and it works amazing, all of this stuff is happening behind the scenes. Someone had to figure it out. And then when uh, apps crash or make mistakes and, and we get mad, well, now we're seeing it from the other perspective. We have to set that up. We have to cover the bases. We have to figure out the algorithm. And we feel sad when our app doesn't work and we, and we want to make our app work nice for our, uh, for our customers. So we can do a little testing to see if this is working by saying over here we had console log uh, view comics info is running, but we could also do is say console log this comic because all of that that we wrote longhand down there as a parameter, it's then sort of turned into shorthand right here, and we can just use this comic within our function. So all of that, this dot parent and all of that is basically sort of condensed as this comic. And we can use it in, in, the, uh, in the function. I'm going to run this in my uh, simulator. I'm going to see if I get any output. First of all, errors. Oh, I should have done this. Uh, remember, check your error console, your um, your error list. That is, check your error list first. Check if there's anything weird in your error list before you go uh, debug it, and then uh, we can check our output. Let me see how mine's working first. So I have. Uh, I'm going to clear my console. It logs me in. One, one thing that might tell you right away something's wrong is if it doesn't automatic you log, you log you in. If you have created the account and it logs you in, that, that's probably it's working. If it doesn't log you in, remember JavaScript basically shuts down completely if there's one error. But OK, so I'm going to view comics. I've got some comics. I've got health, etc. I click on the little speech bubble. 
I'm getting some output right there. Function view comics is running. So at least the function is starting to run. The object that I passed into it then is here with its particular properties. So if I break it down, in here I should see eventually the data. Let's see, zero with table row right here. Object context. So there is a there is a table row. There is data here. So let's pause here. Um, you should get something like this that the function is running. It should say that there's some object like that. If it's not quite there, uh, your error list before you run it might help. Uh, maybe this output here, or also possibly pressing F12 in the browser. If anything pops up there, console errors. So let's pause here and let's see if this is working. <coughs> 